Constitution. Nigeria is currently using the Constitution as enacted in May 1999, having used five others previously. One, in the colonial era, 1914 to 1960, we had Clifford of 1922, Richard of 1946, Macpherson of 1951, and Littleton of 1954. Two, the Independence Constitution of 1960. Three, the 1963 Constitution of the First Republic. Four, the 1979 Constitution of the Second Republic. Five, the 1993 Constitution of the Third Republic. In the Fourth Republic, the present 1999 Constitution. Now, there are a lot of reasons why the current Constitution needs to be trashed. But today, allow me to stick with only two reasons. Number one is the preamble to the Constitution, which gives the impression that the Constitution is the work of Nigerians when it claims that we, the people of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, having firmly and solemnly resolved, do hereby make, enact, and give to ourselves the following Constitution. This is just not true as the ordinary Nigerians were neither consulted in the preparation of the constitution, nor was the constitution written by us. Therefore, a constitution not written by us cannot work for us. Number two, the process of drafting the constitution itself was quite defective. There was inadequate consultation with Nigerians. There was no constitutional conference or no constitutional conferences to ascertain the wishes and desires of Nigerians, nor were referendums conducted to confirm whether or not the constitution was acceptable to and by the people. So how would a constitution be fitting enough when it is not conceived with the diversity of Nigeria in mind? How can a constitution that isn't sensitive to the circumstances of the Nigerian terrain ensure its sustenance and productivity. It will seem that one major reason why we haven't made significant progress in burying this dead horse of a constitution is because we have become so used to it. It is, prob it is probably beneficial to a select few, and they have therefore devised means to profit off of its misgivings. But as long as this retrogressive status quo is maintained, they will continue to weave their way. There is no shame in burying a dead horse that doesn't work for Nigeria anymore. The horse's lifespan serves as enacted experience, a guide to making better choices in the future. So what are the steps to rewriting the Constitution? Referendum. Representatives at the legislature should be tasked with meeting their constituents and detailing their every desire for what the Constitution should and can look like. These meetings can span months. All points must then be properly documented in the most transparent and painstaking manner possible. Constitutional Convention. These same representatives and other stakeholders will then publicly meet and debate on what should be contained in the Constitution. Every representative must be allowed free speech, just like in the Constitutional Convention assembled in Philadelphia in May of 1787. Then we have the documentation process. After debates have been properly weighed and analysis derived, decisions should be put in writing by a committee and then compressed. All parties would then sign an agreement if and when the document satisfies the needs of their constituents. Final step would be the approval and implementation of said new constitution. I think Raymond should go first. I would have interest in selling the country. I don't think I have too much interest. Our constitutional in lawyer, please now, please. But if I might just, um, since uh, the gunter has been thrown at me, um, of course I read the scripts and um, you know, the argument on the, on the Nigerian constitution is an, an argument that may never end. It has been with us as long as we've had this country. In recent times, um, it has, the, the, we hear persons advocate of a new constitution uh, seems to be high in the pro. 
And the argument is this, that the Constitution is not homemade. That is, some people call it a decree and all what it have you. It is written uh, as a decree. Yes, and they are saying that we should have a new Constitution that's actually, that, that represents the independent will of Nigerians at large. And while I'm not taking away anything from the argument of those of that, that are in that school of thought, my view, I'm of the school of thought that, um, that argues that the constitution, there is no constitution that is a perfect document anywhere in the world. And that's why we say that constitutions are organic documents. They continue to grow with changing realities and society continues to evolve. And that's why constitutions usually have the process of amending its provisions to catch up with the realities of the modern times. Now, if for any reason the argument is that this constitution is not working, I think the argument should be, how do we get it to work? Section 9 of the constitution has provided elaborate means of amending its constitution. And to a large extent, I think we have explored this option. We have up to four, or four alterations to the 1999 constitution, uh, with each of them focused on tackling specific um, issues. So for me, the problem is not so much of the source of the, the, pro, the, the, the source of the constitution as much as it is the enforcement of the, of, the, of the constitution itself. And I gave an example of the current strike action by the judicial staff workers. What is the issue? They are advocating for autonomy for state judiciaries. Now, section 121, subsection 3 of the constitution guarantees the autonomy for state judiciaries. Why aren't the state governors Enforcing. Enforcing it. So I don't think we should put so much blame on, we should interrogate the process with the people. Did all Nigerians come and gather at TBS and say, okay, put your signature, we have signed, constitution, <laughs> take it. That's not the problem. I think we should focus more on enforcing the letters of, letters of what you have. If there's a need for changing, then we amend the constitution, section 9 of the constitution. Uh, what say you, Francis? Uh, my, my, my own view. <clears throat> Uh, is that we need to revise the constitution, just like Ramon suggested, and to, to hold the brief of the people who gave us this constitution. That was a process. Number one is that this constitution is a photocopy of the 1979 constitution. There's a rule in law that once a document has been satisfied, it doesn't require further certification. So if you have a constitution, 1979 constitution, mm -hmm. that went through the drafting committee of 49 members yeah. and 230 member uh, constituents assembly that looked at it and adopted it before they presented it to the nation. So why go through the same process again? It oh, was 40 it, years ago that was, so much has changed in 40 the years. The American constitution was written in 1787. Over 200 years, they have deployed amendment, yes. what they call there, what do they call it now? I'm not an American. Amendment. They amendment. Call it amendment. I'm, I'm, you understand? I'm Nigerian. So, 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 <laughs> I don't so have to a, wait until they write so, a so, new constitution so and I say, okay, see, well, the, Americans the reality, have done it. The, the truth of the matter is certain things might have changed, certain things still remain. The reality of 2019 is not the reality of 2021. Mm -hmm. Coronavirus has redefined the world. Yes. So, so, and then also to further argue in support of the people who gave us that law, the fact that they photocopied the one that went through the processes that you suggested, mm -hmm. yes. made it less necessary mm -hmm. to go through to, that process again. That is one. The then two, if it, it, what brought us to the democracy we got with blood, tears, and sweat in 1999, between 1998, June, and May 1999, when Abacha died, did not leave room for too much debate. Exactly. What we wanted as a country is the military out. We, we felt that once the military are out, we will we'll find a way of resolving our issues. And, and that did not allow going through, because there are a lot of things that divide us as a nation, yeah. more than the things that unite us. Sure. So if you go to those assemblies, there might be focus so much more on the things that divide us. Mm, why the military, why the military and, and let us just move to the next stage. Now, it is the next stage that we are, it has not given us the opportunity for you to suggest that we should amend or review or revise the constitution. Exactly. Truth be told, if we want to amend the constitution, we will we go through this thing. Comfort, let's, 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 let's hear your view. Um, yes, yeah, so the constitution, the amendment of the constitution is another uh, topical issue. And um, I think I'm with uh, Joyce on this. Uh, but I think my view would be 
the on the for me uh, on clarity of what the constitution seeks to convey. Um, we've had the issue of you know on one hand we say we're a circular country and we base it on the constitution. On the other hand, we have um, you know re the religious part of it you know and the traditional part all lumped up in the same constitution, which for me is what creates the unbalance, um, the imbalance, and um, the, a lot of the problems that we're having. As she said, a lot of things have happened and gone through in our nation, but I think it is also the people who put the constitution together that probably just were not up to scratch. Um, you alluded to um, the, the American constitution and we've seen it's over 200 years old. Why has it endured? It has endured because the people who sat down to write that constitution wrote it not from selfish interest. They wrote it in the interest of everybody who couldn't be at our own in the figure in the figurative and in, in, in Tinubu Square. They wrote it that if I if I'm not here, would the next person be able to use this constitution, find justice, find fairness? find um, legal standing. And those are the things that are missing in our constitution. And on that premise for me, yes, we do need a new one. We now need selfless people who understand that it is not about me, but about my the next generation coming and the next generations coming that this constitution needs to be written for. And the first point for me is that it has to be clear. It has to be homogeneous. Are we a secular nation following a, a straight path of justice, fairness, or whatever? Or are we a religious one that is following the dictates of uh, um, God that um, um, satisfies everybody. Over. Um, Thank well, you so um, much. It comes down to that same issue. This argument may never end because of it has to do with mm. the Constitution. Mm. But you see, I keep asking myself, what is it that will be written in this new Constitution that will be totally different from what is contained in the current document? Some things that will be For example, be uh, for example, Comfort made argument that the Constitution should be based on principle of equality, justice, and fairness. When you go to the chapter two of the Constitution, it gives an in, an idea of what this of Social and the justice. idea of the Constitution. It doesn't it? So it still comes down to the issue of the enforcement. So should we amend the Constitution to say that chapter two should now be justiceable? Yes. Yes. If that is the case, yes. then we have to write it. Yes. So, so, so. Uh, May I, mean, I come in I get, here I so Raymond's that I can get that case? I, 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 I guess Raymond's be, point. Mm -hmm. Raymond is in favor of amendment and improving on the constitution as it were, mm. instead of rewriting one. Well, and there is no, there will be, we will not be acting on any legal basis if we are rewriting another one because the constitution that guides everything that we ought to do makes provision for amendment yes. and not rewriting. Yes. So we will be acting outside the chief law of yes. the land by saying we want to rewrite. If it will only satisfy the itch of Nigerians who are alive now, then it's good enough reason. If we feel like we own the constitution and we commit ownership, then wouldn't it be worth it? So this is where I come in. Raymond. Yes. Uh, Sorry, yeah. I just Comfort. wanted to um, answer what he said when he said the chapter two, and that was why I referred to the fact that it is unclear the type of constitution we're operating. If you have half of the country saying that their law is Sharia law, for example, and I do not subscribe, I'm not an adherent of Sharia law, how does chapter two help me when my rights get violated? Because there is an entrenched, it's, it's, the Sharia is entrenched in the constitution, which still has this chapter two, that but then the, the Sharia itself is a law. And so because of that unclarity and that clash, there, you cannot have an equitable constitution. It's not possible. You so, must so. be clear on Comfort. what you are doing. Comfort. Are you secular and all of us are on one, on one foundation so that if you violate my laws, I can go to, to one court. source and Comfort. get my redemption? Comfort, if I may, I, I would defer to, to, to Raymond, who seems to have a PhD in constitutional law. But <laughs> uh, uh, my, my, my view is, you see, Sharia law in Nigeria that is enshrined in the constitution is treated as customary law, and it is Sharia private law. Now, if you have issues with people and it has to relate with uh, the criminal part of Sharia law, that is not what our constitution speaks to. 
what does our constitution speak to? What our is constitution the speaks to private law. Yeah. Isn't that the clarity? What is that the practice? That it, is clear, unclear. it is clear in the constitution <laughs> that we have now. It's only for you to find it. Islamic personal so, law. So it is the Islamic personal law, and it is treated as customary law. Yeah. And our customary law, our, our customary law is also recognized. Also mm -hmm. the and that is why yes, you have the Sharia there. Court of Appeal, yes. and then you have the customary Court, oh, court of oh, Appeal in our constitution. Exactly. And, and, and so... We, the, the clarity is there. Exactly. So if we treat the Sharia, so it's, it is not much, even if that is sourced from the religion, mm -hmm. it, is, it is more of a customary law yes. under our laws. Now, and, and the, 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 uh, it is not so difficult to understand what it is, particularly if you look deeper into what we have as against what is being painted. That is one. What yeah. is being painted? How? What is being painted is that Sharia law is operating somewhere and it's uh, to enable some people trample on other people's rights using Sharia law, prosecuting people yeah. using Sharia law. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. That is, not the law. that is not what our constitution says as of today. Yes. So when you have laws in certain states that yes. says you must not take a call, it is the law of that state. The it is not the, the constitution that allows an isba to come and break your bottle of beer. Mm. I've stopped drinking beer. So I uh, have. <laughs> and that aligns with the principle of federalism that allows states, states to be to autonomous make... and independent and make their own private laws. So. Um... But that's not part of what we have now. Is that what we're operating? You're still going back to what I'm saying. You, you have just spoken Sorry. about federalism, but we, it's not Sorry. what we are practicing. Is it the, reg, the reg, um, regionalization? No, Let in, every state do what it wants to do. So, it, it in that case so. of the and that's what I'm that the missing link the is point enforcement that any um, state infrastructure that is missing, and which I think we should, amendment of the constitution should be, uh, effort should be made in amending constitution to meet up with the, the, the missing link that has to do with its enforcement. So, 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 so the truth of the matter is, when he no brought up the issue law. of his bar and breaking of bottles, comfort. right, and comfort. you said it's related comfort. to only the state. Yes, the, the, there's no perfect law. Yes. And who would have thought that the American law as it relates to transition from one government to the other was that weak? until we the advent of uh, Donald Trump. Okay, Francis, the conversations will continue and they will never be complete without you. Temilade Amulodun says, I like your talk show, very interactive and insightful. Thank you, Advocate Team. Thank you, so follow us on our social media platforms on Facebook, Plus TV Africa, using the hashtag TheAdvocateNG or on Twitter and Instagram, at Plus TV Africa using the hashtag TheAdvocateNG. To catch up with previous broadcasts, go to plustvafrica.com forward slash TheAdvocateNG. Comfort is talking to us on the effect of social media on our mental health after this break.